Welcome back to More About Birth, another exciting episode. We have our hosts, Shannon Bennett and Angie Hansen with us today. Hey, guys. Hey. hey. So uh, it has been forever since we've been to a birth. Are you going through withdrawal? I am. And I think even more than that, like interviewing people and hanging out on this podcast, I feel like an imposter because it feels <laughs> like so long. Like, do I... I really go to births. I really do this thing. You know, I've been a midwife for, I don't know how many years now, a lot of years. I still have moments where I feel like an imposter. Yeah. So um, how long has it actually been? Let's see. Mine you was that not... transfer. No, it's been that long. I think so. Yeah, I think because so. Because I had an assistant at the last two Hopefully births. I still know what I'm doing. Eh, it'll come back to you. <laughs> Just bring chocolate. <laughs> and coffee. I know. I bet you didn't even know what you were getting into, did you? No, no. Nobody actually, ever knows what they're getting into. Actually, that kind of is what we're going to talk about today because I don't mm. think half of the people that do home birth or that are even pregnant and having children have any idea what they're getting into Yeah. or what it's all about. And we were having this conversation the other day, kind of more along the lines of what in the world is the difference anyways between choosing to work with a midwife and do a home birth or go to even a hospital midwife or an OB and mm -hmm. deliver in the hospital. Yep. So I feel like it, there's a lot more responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of what we want to talk about today. Um, and it could go in a number of different directions, mm. but... <clears throat> Um, yeah. So kind of the, the question of the day is what am I getting into when I choose a home birth? And along with that, what are the benefits and responsibilities? Because um, there's a lot of responsibility that you wouldn't even think of. Right. Right. And it's kind of like with that, with all the amazing benefits of home birth, mm -hmm. there's a lot of freedom. I mean, there is a ton of freedom, which is kind of the draw for mm -hmm. a lot of people. Making your own choices, doing it where you want, how you want, mm -hmm. with yeah, whom but, you want. But on top of that, <clears throat> along with that, are there's a huge amount of responsibility. Yeah. Um, uh, informed consent, you have to do your homework. And so we're going to kind of dive into that and talk about all those things, um, the benefits well, and the responsibilities. Let's um, start with relationship. Okay. So the thing that I see is one of the biggest things that's so different is the relationship between you and your provider. Mm -hmm. It becomes almost more of a friendship. Like, you know, we've right. known each other forever because I've delivered two of your three babies, right. the last two. Right. <laughs> and so we've known each other for many years now. And yeah. it started out as a like midwife client relationship. And through all the time we spent together during pregnancy and labor and postpartum, it became more of a a friendship and then you had another baby right. and we became closer friends. And yeah. I mean, it's even hard. Like I had someone come in for their eight week appointment the other day and they brought me this beautiful gift. And all I'm thinking about is great. This is the last appointment. I'm not going to see them anymore until they have right. another baby. Right. Right. Yeah. I think that's, it's that way probably for, you know, most home birth midwives where mm -hmm. it, you know, by the end of the whole thing, it, it feels like family. Mm -hmm. um, it's that's how I deep the relationship. I actually cried at my last midwife appointment. I yeah. I cried on the way home. I was like, oh, it's like a friend I'm never going to see anymore. People have more babies just so they can come hang out with they Shannon. Do. <laughs> I, I hear that too. They're like, well, we'll just have another one. <laughs> that's right. Or they'll right. tell me, no, we won't have any more. And I said, don't say that because as soon as you say that, you're going to have some. I'm not sure that's a good birth plan. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good birth control that's for sure <laughs> right right but yeah so the relationships and we were just talking earlier about with that um midwife relationship mm -hmm. is honesty is a huge piece because oh, yeah. this goes into your quality of care um so talk a little bit about I that i can't even take care of someone that isn't honest with me i had a client years ago that told me she was a first-time mom well, in reality, she had had a baby when she was a teenager and gave it up for adoption. Oh, And because, wow. you know, with midwifery care, you don't always do a vaginal exam early on and a pap smear like right. is <clears throat> customary. So there were no signs physically that I had checked uh -huh. that would clue me in. She didn't have stretch marks on her belly. She mm. had this nice toned tummy. I mean, wow. there, there were no clues. Yeah. And so... 
we started out this relationship like that, and then partway through, I found out that that was not the story, and it would have changed the whole way that I took care of her. It would have changed the questions I asked yeah. her. Um, we would have talked about what her previous experiences were like as far as emotionally, any trauma, you yeah. know. Yeah. There, there was a lot going on there, and I've had people not share with me, um, had a lady not share with me that she had a major medical problem wow and it it just would have been a total game changer i would not even have done a home birth for her right so i've got to have complete honesty right because um to do home birth safely we take healthy moms and healthy right. babies and only so, healthy moms and healthy babies yeah there's some things that are contraindicated mm -hmm. for home birth and right. your midwife needs to know about right. those so that burden of responsibility is um you know, on you as a client mm -hmm. to, to report those things so that, yeah, well, and I we know what's going on. People, you know, when they come in for a consultation, you're pregnant and you are already parents. Yeah. So right. already it is your responsibility to make decisions for this baby. Yeah. Whether it be how they eat, whether or not they exercise, where they're going to give birth, mm -hmm. who's a part of that. There's just a whole bunch that plays in. Yeah. So another thing that we talked about, um, one of the hallmarks of midwifery is preventative care. Definitely. Um, we try to see problems mm -hmm. coming head problems off before they even develop. So we're not just running around putting out fires after they happen. So talk to me a little bit about, um, about that preventative care, diet, nutrition, how that is um, it, specific. It starts with that first consultation. So I typically take a few notes and just get a little bit of background like, why did you choose home birth? You know, why are you even thinking about this? Mm -hmm. um, what's your history with it? What What is your health in general been like? Mm -hmm. Have you had babies before? What did those births and, and um, pregnancies look like? So then it just as, you know, people come for each appointment, we actually as midwives have a list of things we want to make sure we cover so that mm -hmm. people are informed yeah. So that we have a chance to discuss it. They have a chance to get their questions answered and know that when they make a decision, they've had all the information they need to make an informed decision. Yeah. So as the pregnancy goes on, there's different things that we cover. Mm -hmm. And how might the importance of nutrition play a part in an out of hospital birth setting um, and be very, very crucial. Oh, it's big. And Angie <laughs> is really big on this one. <laughs> so a lot of times I'll do like a pop quiz. I'll give people a minute and say, okay, what'd you have to eat today? If it's later in the day, or what'd you eat yesterday? Mm -hmm. And it amazes me, some of the people and the incredible diets they have. And then every once in a while you get someone who said, well, I had mac and cheese for lunch and a McMuffin for breakfast. I had Soda. a bag of gummy bears for a snack, and I drank two Cokes in the afternoon. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I see trouble in your future. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right, right. And the reason that is, too, I mean, everybody knows some of the hot button issues, but like the, the glucose, the blood sugar mm -hmm. issues. But another huge one is protein. Tell, tell us about why protein is so important. You know, and there's a lot of controversy on that. Some midwives feel like you don't need as much protein as they've been saying we do recently. Mm -hmm. But Dr. Brewer wrote a book years ago, and it was really big on protein as far as preventing preeclampsia, mm -hmm. high blood pressure, just the whole gamut. Yep. Um, I like to see my clients get a good amount of protein, like 60 yep. or more grams. And proteins are the building blocks of red blood cells. Yeah. Yeah, so nutrition is huge. So again, um, that honesty with your midwife and reporting those things, mm -hmm. you have to take your nutrition seriously because nutrition builds a healthy mm -hmm. pregnancy, which builds a healthy labor, which builds a healthy well, moms postpartum. Who are afraid to gain weight during pregnancy? Right. You've got to gain weight. Right. Because if you're not gaining weight, you're not eating adequate calories. Mm -hmm. And yes, some moms gain 40 pounds and some moms only gain 25, but as long as they're getting adequate calories and they're eating good, healthy food, yep. um, a friend of mine always says, eat the rainbow. Yeah. Right. You know, eat, eat, all eat the colors. rainbow, get your protein and eat the rainbow. Yeah. So you're right. going to get what you need. Right. All right. So one of the things that I think of as a responsibility going into a home birth is preparation. 
There's a lot. One of the things I think about is preparation. So reading, um, listening um, right. to podcasts, but doing your homework. So uh, tell me what you see from your perspective, because what I see is a lot of times in our culture, oh. sadly, we don't like to read as much. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so it's like people come into this. Well, and we're in the day and age of videos also. There's right. informational things on YouTube. Oh, There's yeah. things that run through Facebook. There's right. podcasts. Um, there's podcasts. <laughs> right. So right. I don't find that people check out books like they used to. 20 years ago, my library rotated all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a group of clients that don't use modern technology much. So they are the ones that mostly check out things from my library. Mm-hmm. Occasionally first-time moms, but for the most part, people want notifications sent to them weekly about what's going on in pregnancy, Mm -hmm. just short little snippets. No one wants to sit down and actually read. Right, and so if you see someone who has become a client Mm -hmm. and they're not asking any questions during their prenatals, you don't see them or hear them talking about... It worries um, me. You know, resources, materials that they're gleaning from... Mm -hmm. What are some of the problems that can crop up with that? Um, Just lack of information. There's a lot more fear about what labor is going to be like. Mm -hmm. Um, I see moms that have not notified me that, for instance, their baby hasn't moved as much as it has been all of a sudden. Mm. Or that maybe they've been feeling faint a lot lately, which is something new. Mm-hmm. They'll because they haven't read or they haven't listened to what I've told them. Right. They don't realize that that's a red flag that I need to know about those things. Right. Mm-hmm. And also, some of that I think is just the fact that in mainstream um, obstetrical care, you don't have access to your provider like you do with a midwife. Mm -hmm. So you tend to not call over every little thing. Right. But I need to know those things so I can take good care of you. Right. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the birth itself. Mm -hmm. Um, So like planning for, prepping for, setting up your birth environment. How Obviously, you're birthing at home, so what are some of the things that you have to take ownership of to prep for this event? Right. I mean, we do a home visit. You know, we've been to home visits at 32 weeks just to kind of check things out, right? Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that your home has um, adequate hot water for filling a birth pool, (laughs) for one thing. Um, A lot of times, honestly, um, when I'm asking people where things are in their kitchen that I might need, you get a really good glimpse of what their diet's really like by what is in their cupboards. Yep. Um, You like to see what they're eating. You want to know that it's a safe environment, Mm -hmm. um, that there's nothing domestic going on. Right. You are responsible for your pets. I once was bit in the behind by a dog, oh, no. a little yippy dog, because she was upset that I was touching her mama. Oh, wow. So, you know, we talk about things like that, like you're responsible to make sure there's someone to watch your pets. Mm-hmm. We definitely, um, for instance, if you have well water and you don't know, you should have it tested to make sure that it's safe to be drinking while you're pregnant. Mm. There's just a lot of things that you don't think about that maybe aren't mentioned. Mm -hmm. There's supplies that you need to gather. Yeah. And you've done home birth, so you tell me what are things that you did to prepare. Yeah, well, um, again, you know, this is kind of jumping back to the prenatal portion, but I think that the information is just huge. Preparing Mm -hmm. yourself, I think especially first-time parents or parents that have not had an unmedicated birth before, Mm-hmm. You you really cannot um, overestimate how huge this event is and how how much it's going to take out of you. And the tools you may need, as in nutrition, <laughs> comfort tools. Yeah, you until you've gone through it, I just don't think you totally know how important mm-hmm. all those pieces are in the preparation. So um, at least for me and from what I've seen from other people, the people that prepare the most, whether that's reading or, you know, listening, right. classes. Or classes, whatever those things are, um, the people that prepare the uh-huh. most have the most tools in their bag right? mentally, emotionally, um, to make it through the labor. And speaking of tools and bags, 
I find that the people, it's kind of like Murphy's Law, right? If you carry an umbrella, it usually doesn't rain, but you leave the umbrella <laughs> at home and then it rains. Right. So um, being responsible to sometimes maybe even pre-register at the hospital in case of transport, because mm. sometimes it happens, you yeah. know? Right. And we can talk about that more later, that All it's right. time to go to a break. Um, but yeah, let's pick up and talk about that. We will be right back here with more about birth, so stay tuned. Well, welcome back to more about birth. And I'm here with our hosts, Shannon Bennett and Angie Hansen. And we're having a great conversation about really the whole home birth experience. Mm. Good conversation, a little bit of chocolate. <laughs> so as usual, when we're together, we get excited and we start kind of rabbit trailing. So let's refocus, mm -hmm. talk a little bit more about working through emotional issues during pregnancy, mm -hmm. um, kind of the, the difference when you're working with a midwife and choosing an out of hospital birth. Yeah. Yeah. So we talked about a little bit about the we relationship between, okay. <laughs> uh, between a midwife and her client mm -hmm. and their family and how it kind of becomes a family by the end of this whole process. And along with that, um, we really believe that, the emotional issues are huge. And this is something I don't think you're going to see as much in a traditional setting. Mm -hmm. um, but midwives really focus in on the emotional issues because... Well, we just had an appointment the other day like that, you know, yeah, without and it, mentioning huge. names. Uh -huh. In fact, I've had people tell me before, I almost feel like I just went to a counseling session instead of right. a prenatal appointment. Right. Because it's not just about your body. Right. Yeah, everything that is your makeup is part of mm -hmm. your pregnancy and goes and affects your pregnancy and your baby and your birth your experience. So, um, you know, ignoring those emotional issues or life issues or whatever is going on in your life, stress, um, we know that mm -hmm. these things affect your physical well being. And mm -hmm. so, spending time um, going over those and again, being honest with your. Right. With your provider, because right. we're going to ask you, how are you feeling? And I, mean, I don't expect you to tell me about all your marriage problems or, you know, what your struggles are with your in-laws. Although some, you usually get that. But sometimes they do. <laughs> sometimes you do. Yeah. And that's good because usually if you dig below those layers, yeah, it's affecting how you've been feeling. Right. It's affecting your you know, emotional status. It's affecting your stress level, which mm -hmm. can affect your pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And so just like it's your responsibility to take um, nutrition seriously mm -hmm. in an out of hospital setting um, yep. to, you know, because we want things to be safe. Mm -hmm. The emotions are just as much right. a part of that. Right. Um, so, you know, trying to work through and, and rep your emotional issues and report if you're not able to work through them or just say, mm -hmm. like, I'm struggling with fear or anxiety mm -hmm. or depression so that we can either, you know, refer you to somebody right. or help you ourselves work through and those there things. are some things that we can do just relaxation practice there's actually some herbs that are safe during pregnancy mm -hmm. during breastfeeding that we can help these moms with yeah um you know some days i joke i'll i'll tell my husband yeah i, I was a counselor today or you right. know you feel like you wear all these different hats mm -hmm. but i think that's part of being a midwife and why it's different Right. The appointments are an hour long, right. so you exactly. have time to do that. Right. And you need to unload some of these things before you go into labor. Um, just an example would be someone, you know, who's had a history of sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. They need to be honest with you about it because it needs to be dealt with because that can come up during labor. I think towards the end of labor especially, mm -hmm. and you get ready to start pushing, and it's so intense, and you're having all these sensations, mm -hmm. and... That can trigger things hugely, right. um, you know, being honest right. about those things and, and partnering with your midwife 
to work through them to have the best, mm-hmm. most satisfying birth outcome that you can. There's actually a, a part in our list of things that we like to make sure we cover during pregnancy at the prenatals mm-hmm. where we bring up any fear or anxiety about the upcoming birth or anything that you need to work through. Right. And we talk about it. Right. And sometimes moms will say, no, I'm, I'm good. Mm-hmm. I, there's nothing. And then you give them a second and they'll be like, well, actually. Right. And then it opens the door to talk about that. Right. Yeah, so that's that's huge. So that's one of the things. Another thing that we wanted to touch on is informed consent because, mm-hmm. again, this is one of those benefits that we talked mm-hmm. about of home birth. Mentioned a little. Mm-hmm. Is that um, there's freedom. And, mm-hmm. um, te- you know, typically a home birth midwife isn't going to tell you what you have to do. No, in fact, people ask me flat out sometimes, what would you do? Right. And I can say, this is what I did, or this is what I chose to do, Mm -hmm. but I will not tell them what to do. I tell them, you're the parents, Yep. you need to read about it, you need to ask me questions, you need to research it, you need to pray about it, whatever you need to do, Mm -hmm. and then come back to me and tell me what you've decided, and then you are responsible for that decision, Right. whether it be to circumcise or not circumcise, to test for group B strep, Mm -hmm. Or not test for group B strep or treat for group B strep or not treat. Yeah, yeah. Whatever it is. Right. Um, having a vaginal birth after cesarean. I can't be responsible for everybody's everything. They <laughs> right. have to take the responsibility. Right. And I think that's a huge difference mm-hmm. between an out-of-hospital birth and right. an in-hospital setting um, because, yeah, the parents really are mm-hmm. responsible. And so with that informed consent goes... The study and the understanding. Yeah, it's work. It's work. It is. You have to People read. People ask me about vaccines. I send them home with three or four books. Right, right. Say, keep them till your final eight-week appointment. Study them, look them over, do right. your research. You need to decide. I can't decide that for you. But there are all sorts of things um, that unless your midwife feels like there's a, a safety reason that's mm-hmm. clearly pointing to why you mm-hmm. might need blood sugar testing or an ultrasound right. um, or group B strep testing. hmm these things are optional, and that's huge. You can refuse anything, and if I feel like it's something you really need, I'll tell you, I really feel like that's something right. that you need. Right. I still, You still have the choice, but I'm telling you. But, and, that, and then it's charted in their chart that we discussed it, right. I encouraged it, and they refused. And this includes both uh, prenatally and during the birth. So yes, labor, you, postpartum. Yeah, you have the mm-hmm. right to refuse um, vaginal exams during mm-hmm. labor. You mm-hmm. have the right to um, refuse all sorts of if different things. If you don't things. want the Doppler used during labor. I'm kind of a stickler about that one, though. I tell right. them, for you, your safety and your baby's safety, I really need to be able to listen quickly and accurately. Right, but the the the, the flip side of that is the responsibility. You have mm-hmm. to be informed enough to be willing to accept the risks and the downfall. Yeah. If the worst should happen, you need to know what that worst is, and you need to be right. willing to say, that's I what choose, I'm choosing mm-hmm. to live with. And I know the consequences, right. And that's not something that is as emphasized, I think, in another setting. So, Well, I've had that situation where, you know, you encourage somebody to do something you really feel like is important, and they said, well, we've read about it. We've decided we really don't want to do this. I Mm -hmm. say, are you, you know, you might want to rethink this particular one. Still your choice. They make the choice. I chart the notes, and sometimes the outcome isn't what they had hoped. Right. But then it's their responsibility because they're the parents. Right. Right. So it, you know, it is weighty and it feels mm-hmm. weighty and there's that responsibility. And sometimes they don't want to take it. Right. Sometimes exactly. they realize, oh my gosh, I'm the parent. This baby's not born yet, but I'm the parent right. and I have to make this decision and I right. need to make sure I make the right one. Right. But I think that type of setting and that relationship is so crucial and it's amazing to have that opportunity prenatally and during birth before you become a parent. Because like you said, you're a parent when you're pregnant. And so right. going through this process already. of letting it sink in that I'm responsible for my body and now this other life. Um, and when that burden, mm-hmm. that responsibility is placed on you, you get to grow. Mm-hmm. And I remember the first time I was pregnant. I mean, it's been 30 some years ago now. I didn't think about that. I just knew mm-hmm. that I would 
go to the doctor and the doctor would make my decisions for me. I didn't have to worry about what one I would make because they would tell me, you know, this is what you need to do. This is what test you need to have. Right. This is when you need to come in. This is, you know, how you need to handle labor. And I was totally okay with that then. Mm. Right. Until I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right, right. So, yes, that prep work is so important. Very important. Um, what about families? Yeah. Because even though you've chosen home birth, like I don't know if you experienced this, but even when I chose to do home birth, I had family members that were like, are you out of your mind? <laughs> I mean, you know, and I remember thinking that about my sister-in-law because yeah. she was having home birth long before I even considered it. In fact, I was at one of her home births and thought to myself, does she always have to go against the grain? Does she always have to be that, you know, 2% of the population that has a different opinion about something? Yeah. And I totally respect her, and I'm thankful to her now because she was part of the reason I became a midwife. But at the time, you know, so you're going to come up against opposition even when you've made an, a decision. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to take that responsibility of handling that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I don't know if you experienced that. A little bit. Yeah, I think the first time around. Especially Because the first it was time. new to our right. whole family, uh, both sides. And they're know? like, you haven't done it before. What if it doesn't work out right? Don't you want to wait till the second one? Right, right. It? So I think there, there were quite a bit of nerves and nervousness, you know, going mm -hmm. on with that first grandchild yep. thing. Yep. But, um, and it's all out of love. It's not that they're being harsh. They right. just truly want everybody to be safe. Right. So, yeah. So, you know, trying to prep. My legs fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> trying to prep um, extended family or guests or people that are going to be at your birth. Because, mm -hmm. again, that's one of those freedom issues. Mm -hmm. Shannon always likes to say, it's your party. <laughs> and it's your birthday party, not mine. You get to invite who you want to be there. And that's a huge freedom. Um, but at the same time. But talk about that a minute. Who do you want to invite to your birth? And who should you not invite to your birth? <laughs> right. Well, I think that's one of those things, again, that is hard to envision the first time around. Mm -hmm. um, some people get a little overexcited and want to invite lots of people. Or the opposite. Maybe yep. you think, I'm such a private person, I'm not going to have anybody there. Right. And then you actually needed more support. Mm -hmm. Or vice versa, where you, you invite a bunch of people. We always laugh that it ends up taking four adults to help one baby out. Right, <laughs> right, right. Uh, but then there's those times where you get excited and invite the photographer and the friend and the doula and the mom and the mother-in-law, and pretty soon You're the like, labor has uh, stalled and the midwife is you know gently and kindly kicking people out because yeah, it's not working. Yeah, I've sent people out to dinner before. Because right, it, go run this Labor was kind of stalling, and then the baby comes while they're gone. Right. Go, go figure. Right, so again, this is one of those responsibility things of, of planning the birth mm -hmm. and prepping the people that are going to be there. Mm -hmm. Another huge part of this kind of care is prepping your um, kids, if you already have kids, right. and your husband is a huge part of this because you're a team. And I know my husband has shared with me that he wasn't totally and completely comfortable with the whole home birth thing even when we did it. Mm. And I hear this a lot. They'll dads will tell me, um, well, you know, it's important to me because it's important to her. So whatever she wants, I'll support. Mm -hmm. And then I'll have dads come sometimes for the consult, and they're almost sitting here like this. <laughs> and you know that Arms they got folded. drug there, and that mm. they really aren't all into this, and that worries me. Right, right, for sure. So, um, but but husbands really are a huge part of this, mm -hmm. and so. They need that, to be on board. That's going to be something that we talk about eventually. Yep. Um, interview some dads, get the guys fun. involved yeah. on this whole process because it's, it's huge. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we have resources, books. We, we include kids and dads mm -hmm. and prenatals and in this whole prep process because it's a family event. It's a family event yeah. and it's a normal part of the continuum of life in this journey. Right. Um, and so not an illness or disease, that's a normal, natural event in the course of your day. Yeah, right. So getting the whole family on board is really a hallmark of home birth midwifery right. care as well. Right. Okay, so we are going to end with just a funny story from my past to illustrate this point of prepped and not prepped. And I won't use names, but if my friend ever hears this, she's going to know, <laughs> She'll know who she who is. She is. Um, but 
this was long before I was a birth assistant. I had a passion for birth, but I was just still contemplating doing Mm -hmm. this. And my friend was staying at her parents' house because her husband was fishing in Alaska. And someone else was watching her younger kids. And she went into labor a few weeks before she expected to. She really wanted to wait until dad got home. Nothing was ready. (laughs) Not a thing. So this is like that whole, you know, I'm having a home birth. I need to be prepared thing. She went into labor just like that. And she's having these good rocking contractions. The midwife is 40, 45 minutes away or more. And her parents were really not even that comfortable with her having her birth at their house. And so all of a sudden, and she had no supplies like ready or in a place. And so... We were sending people out to the store to grab stuff. I was running around, you know, trying to play midwife and doula and birth assistant all at the same time and friend. I would help her through a contraction and then run to the other room to get some towels and throw the towels in the dryer. And the dad says, you you can't have those towels in the dryer for too long. The house is going to catch on fire. And so, uh, you know, we just we had no idea how fast this baby was going to come. But. It was such a case in point of, you know, she wanted to get in the water. Yeah. Where's the birth tub? Yeah. Where's the liner? Nothing was blown up. Nothing was set up. And so <laughs> I've seen firsthand the chaos and the mayhem that can ensue. Not exactly the environment you want to give birth <laughs> right. in, right? No, it's supposed it wasn't to be calm, calm and relaxed. peaceful. And people were running around every which way. So um, it was pretty comical. It did end well you know but everyone was a little harried from the experience so having your stuff together having your plan having plan a b and c Mm -hmm. being flexible with those plans Mm -hmm. all these things are seriously important responsibilities for having a home birth the big takeaway be prepared right (laughs) so we will see you next time on more about birth and maybe we'll talk about this some more it's kind of a deep subject yeah sounds good thanks for joining us see ya